Hi, this is Prophetess Lenin Hanaya, and I'd like to welcome to you, you to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast, where I give you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. What I'd like to do today to open up this topic, which will be a series that I cover over a number of webcasts until it has been thoroughly explored, I'd like to open it up by reading a letter from my blog. And I have literally hundreds of letters and comments on my blog very similar to this. As a matter of fact, to date, this is the most researched topic on my blog for the last three years since I posted about this topic. It has been the most researched topic. Just this month alone, there has been over a thousand searches on my blog for this topic. So what I want to do is read this letter, and then I'm going to get right into what I will be talking about and sharing with you over this the, the length of this series. And this letter is from a lady that calls herself Araba. I'm 33 years old, a single lady from Ghana, West Africa, and I have been battling these demons for a long while. I didn't know about their manipulation until today from reading your articles, and I must say I could relate so much with all you were saying. In fact, I think they had a stronghold on my life because I used to masturbate a lot and was into fornication with my then boyfriend. But as I became born again, I started shedding off some of these bad habits through the quickening power of the word. But rather strangely, it was at that point that I started feeling the presence of something I have come now to know as incubus. Sometimes I can feel someone touching me all over. I feel someone lying beside me in bed. Literally, the bed will shake. Hmm. Sometimes I wake up with marks on my body and rashes on my face overnight. Sometimes my electricity appliances will freeze. I call electricians only to realize nothing was wrong with them in the first place, and they start working again. My sis, I could go on and on if you allow me. I guess it's excitement from the fact that I have finally found someone I could freely share with. Please, can we continue to communicate further through my mail? Thanks. I think I can sleep better today knowing that I am not alone and not cursed and my house is not haunted by a ghost. Phew! And that letter was from Gizmo. She actually posted this comment on my blog on a page that I entitled Incubus and Succubus, Sex Demons of the Night. And that is what this segment is going to be about. Um, I first learned of Incubus and Succubus spirits about 10 years ago when I encountered a very dear sister from the church that I used to pray with and fellowship regularly with. And when I published my first book, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion Handbook, after reading the book, looking to me as somebody that had expertise in matters of Christian sexuality, she came and began to share with me what she was going through. And what she described to me really blew my mind. I was very shocked. Uh, it sounded like something that you would see on a rated R, uh, low-budget horror film, like The Exorcist. Not, not saying that The Exorcist was low budget, I'm sorry, but something that you would see on a horror film, definitely not something that I expected somebody to actually describe to me, especially a Christian sister in the church that I knew personally was a prayer warrior, was a worshiper. She was a young lady that lived a very consecrated life. There was no obvious sin in her life. There was no manifestations of secret sin. And I was really perplexed. I couldn't understand it. And what she described to me were instances of what she said were spirits having sex with her. And she gave me very explicit uh, uh, descriptions of being raped, of intercourse, of female demons, male demons, or spirits that will manifest themselves in either a male or a female form. We know that spirits are neither male nor female, but spirits that will manifest themselves in a male or a female form. And she said that the spirits would literally 
uh, come to her and she could literally see them and sometimes they would even take on bodies. She described violence, she described getting beat, getting choked, she described things in our home being disturbed and this had been going on since she was a little girl. At that, the time that she told me, it had been probably about 20 years. She had sought all kinds of deliverance. She had fasted. She had prayed with no relief. And I have to tell you, she, she came to me because I am the author of a book called The Spirits of Sexual Perversion Handbook. She came to me desperate for answers. And I want to tell you, I didn't have any. I didn't have any. The only time that I had ever heard of anything like that was when I was a teenager and I had a teacher that was a professed witch. She herself said that she was a witch and a Satan worshiper and she described herself having sex with demons and I didn't believe her. She was a very strange lady and I pretty much dismissed it and I didn't believe it. And so this is how I was uh, introduced to the whole idea of sex demons which go by other names they are sometimes called incubus succubus spirit husbands spirit wives night demons sex demons uh, marine spirits these are some different names that i've heard them called by so what we're going to be discussing uh through the length of this series is i've done a lot of research on this over the years i've interviewed a lot of people i have read hundreds of letters about this from my bloggers and uh, I definitely have gained some insight into it and I think one of the most shocking things that I gained as I sought to get information to help others was that I had actually been attacked by incubi spirits my entire life and didn't realize it so that was the most shocking thing for me to find out and how I really was prompted to do some more extensive research on this was just a demand. I mean, it was simply the law of supply and demand. There is such a demand for knowledge on this topic. People continuously came to my blog wanting information about sex demons, about incubus, and I was only able to give them very generalized answers because I hadn't researched the topic and I really didn't know anything about it. And I needed a revelation. And it was at that time that I really set myself to fasting and praying determined to get some clear answers and some direction from Yahweh God about how to help people that are struggling with this issue. So what I want to do is I want to actually read the definition and this is a basic definition you can look look it up and get it in any dif dictionary Excuse me. You can get this de definition from any dictionary. This particular definition I got from Merriam Webster, Webster Collegiate.com. And the definition for incubus is an evil spirit that lies on persons in their sleep, especially one that has sexual intercourse with women while they are sleeping. The definition for succ succubus is a demon assuming female form to have sexual intercourse with men in their sleep. And again, these are basic secular definitions. You definitely don't see the term incubus or succubus in scripture. What I do want to say about those names, though, and as a general rule of thumb when you're talking about spirit, you don't ever want to put too much merit into the name of a spirit. Because remember that even, even God and Satan in the Bible are referred to by many names and many titles. And so incubus and succubus are the commonly used names for those spirits here in the U.S. Uh, in African cultures, they're more commonly referred to as spirit husbands and spirit wives. And some people just simply call them sex demons or night demons. But whatever you call them, that we need to deal with them, not by name, but by category, by assignment. And incubus spirits or incubi, the plural form of that, they are simply demons of lust. They are lust spirits. They are perversion spirits, sexual lust demons. And incubus are actually a very powerful, high-ranking class of lust demons. 
So that is the basic rundown of it. And I personally was touched by this in my life. And it's amazing that I never knew that I was experiencing this, like I said, until I began to do the research and pray and fast and and uh, really get some knowledge revelation about these spirits. I didn't even realize that I was under attack by these myself. So when I set out to help others, I really ended up helping me. And one of the questions that that come up a lot, especially for people in the body of Christ, because I think it's really hard to accept that somebody that is truly a born again believer could experience something like this. And it's really uncomfortable for us to believe that, to accept that, especially if we've never encountered anything like it. And so what I want to do before we go any further is just deal with the question of whether or not they really exist. And I want to take a look at a scripture in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. And this is the New Living Translation of the Bible. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair and they took them wise of all which they chose. They took them wise of all which they chose. Now with that scripture, it literally means, and it's the most literal meaning, it means that demon spirits had sex with human women. And the question may come to mind, how is that possible? And I want to make note of the fact that in Revelations 12, 9, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, we see two instances of Satan, who we know is a spirit, taking on some type of physical form. He takes on the form of a serpent. Um, he's also described as a dragon, which could be symbolic. But we know for sure the instance of him in the garden with Eve as a serpent wasn't symbolic. That was very literal. And then we see another instance in Scripture. If you look in uh, Genesis chapter 18 and chapter 19 through verse 23, and I like to read those type of text in the New Living Translation. It's so much easier to understand because the language is more relevant. But if you look there in Genesis chapter 18 uh, and chapter 19 through verses 23, you see an occasion where God himself came to visit Abraham with two angels and they took on human form. And when they took on those human bodies during that time that they were on the earth in those human bodies, which they felt God felt was necessary for that particular assignment, he wanted to interact with Abraham on a level that he could really be understood. And so he took on a human body in order to do that. And during that time, when they were in human form, they were fully functional as human beings. In that text, in Genesis chapter 18 and 19, they talked, they walked, they ate, they had their feet washed, they even slept. And so it is, it, it is definitely irrefutably proven in Scripture that spirits can take on some type of form of a human or an animal. And so if they can do that and they're fully functional when in those forms, then it's not hard to believe now or understand that demon spirits could have sex with human women. And um, so for this first segment of Incubus and Succubus, Sex Demons of the Night, that's what I wanted to cover. I want you to keep a lookout for this. We're going to be going through this very slowly, part by part, until the, the matter is, is uh, thoroughly, thoroughly explored. And that is my timer. So this segment is up. But again, this is Dr. Intimacy. I thank you for tuning into the webcast. Make sure you share this with your friends and family if you like it. If it's helping you, share it on your YouTube page, on your Facebook page, and tune back in for the next segment. Thanks. Hi, this is Prophetess Lenin Hanaya, and I'd like to welcome you to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast, where I give you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. Well, I thank you for tuning in today, and today I'm going to be picking up where I left off on my series on Incubus and Succubus sex demons of the night 
Well, in the first segment of this, we talked about, I, I laid a little ground information about incubus and succubus, gave the definition, um, gave you the, the admonishment not to pay too much attention to those names and just to remind you that they are very powerful spirits of sexual lust. And I opened up that segment with a comment from my blog, and I'd like to do that again today and maybe for all of these segments because these stories are real and it's because of these stories that I'm even doing these this webcast so this story this is uh, Gizmo this is a letter from Gizmo and she posted this on my insights from Dr. Intimacy a WordPress blog which you can find at Dr. Intimacy dot wordpress dot com and if you can't remember that you can always find all of my websites and email addresses and any way to contact me on my website drintimacy.com that's d-r-i-n-t-i-m-a-c-y dot com and it will link you into all of my other sites but on my uh, insights from Dr. Intimacy blog I have a dedicated page to Incubus and Succubus and so this is a letter from that page this is from Gizmo I am a 26 year old woman and I was molested from the ages of 10 to 12 years old. I kind of liked it at the time because I was young, fat, and ugly when it was happening to me. I did not know at the time he was molesting me. He made me feel good, and I thought I was lucky. I did not understand what was going on. Years went by, and I am now married with two kids. Ever since I married my husband, I've been feeling like something is having sex with me at night when I am asleep. The feeling feels so good and so strong that it blows my mind. Now when I have sex with my husband, it does not feel good. It used to, but now I don't care. I want to have sex with my husband. I look every night for whatever it is that is having sex with me. I even go and take naps all through the day, hoping and looking for it. This is causing a lot of hell with me and my husband. I no longer want my husband, and my husband is all mad and upset because he can't please me in the bedroom anymore. I try to change, but it's so hard because my body wants and craves that thing that makes love to me at night. I'm so messed up, and I do love my husband. I really, really do. What can I do to end this madness? Please, please help me. What am I to do? And again, that letter was from Gizmo from my Insights from Dr. Intimacy blog. And letters like that is why I want to do this series. I know a lot of people don't believe in these occurrences, but for the people that are experiencing it, it is all too real. And so I want to pick up where I left off. We, we left off talking about whether or not there is validity to the fact that these spirits even exist. And I read to you Genesis chapter uh, 6, verse 1. And it said, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And we talked about how spirits are able to take on some type of physical body. So we've got the proof that they exist. Um, whether or not you accept that is up to you, but there is at least some scriptural validity to it. So how do you know if you, you're being attacked by these spirits? Well, whether or not you're being attacked by these spirits is usually pretty obvious because they tend to manifest themselves to your conscious mind. That means that whoever is being attacked by incubi spirits can literally see them, they can feel them, they can smell them. It is a very real experience as if being in the room with a human being. And so you usually can tell. And, and I keep looking down and I just want to let you know that I'm getting uh, a lot of this information I compiled all of my years of research on this topic into a very extensive chapter in my latest book, book which is called The Spirits of Sexual Perversion uh, Reference Book. And you can find this on my website, drintimacy.com. But I have a, a dedicated chapter to Incubus and Succubus in the book. And if I keep glancing down, that's what I'm looking at, looking at the scriptures and the notes that I have in here. 
Um, but they manifest themselves to your conscious mind and cause you to experience all of the stimulation and physical feelings that take place during intercourse or sexual contact with a physical person. So that's the most obvious manifestation of them. Um, now, it's not always as obvious because not everybody sees an actual physical person or actually sees the spirit. Some people just feel the spirit as in as Gizmo just explained. So what do they do? What do they do? Well, these demons, most of the time they reveal themselves at night, but they can actually reveal themselves to you at any time during the day. These attacks can happen at any time. They just happen to be most common at night. Um, what they do is, let's see, many people claim to actually see spirit bodies that come and subject them to various sexual acts. These spirits are often violent and will attack you, beating, choking, and restraining you. They may even disturb things in your home and break things. Think of them as you would an extremely abusive sex partner or rapist. Um, and I, I, this was very personal for me as well because my my mom, my dear mom, and who was also a a uh, ordained minister of the gospel, God bless her, Gail Wilson. Uh, you can find her online as well. But uh, she was attacked by these spirits from when she was a little girl. And I can remember times, you know, my mom waking up in the morning looking as pale as a ghost because she had been choked or beaten throughout the night by one of these spirits. And I couldn't understand that because it had never affected me that way with that type of manifestation but as I got older and I got more involved in different types of sexual perversion I did have those type of encounters I remember a particular occasion uh, after performing phone sex with a guy that I was engaged to at that time and this was this was when I was a born again believer. I was already a Christian at that time, going to church. Obviously, had a lot of growing to do, but I was already a part of the body of Christ. And we were engaged, and I had phone sex with him, and I was feeling very convicted and guilty afterward. And afterward, um, something literally picked my bed up off the floor, and and uh, turned it sideways. And then dropped it back down and my body flopped on the bed. I was not drinking. I had no alcohol in my system. I had no drugs in my system, prescription or otherwise. I was not tired. It was 8 o'clock in the evening. I wasn't sleeping. This was an experience that I actually had. And so these, these spirits, um, they are oftentimes very violent. Um, they will choke, they will beat, they will rape, but not always. Sometimes they just give the sexual experience, and sometimes it's something that you just feel, and you don't even see them. On that particular evening, I did not see the, the spirit that moved my bed. I just, I just experienced myself moving with the bed when that bed was picked up and slammed down. And it wasn't lifted just an inch off the floor. I mean, it was picked up until the bed was almost turned over. And I did not see that spirit, but there was another occasion uh, after an act of uh, fornication. Um, this was actually a, a, a really devastating situation that had happened for me, which you can also read about on my blog in an article called uh, Setting the Captives Free from Friendship to Fornication. And this was an occasion where the assistant pastor of my church befriended me. I was very young in the Lord at that time. As a matter of fact, at that particular time, I was a backslider and he befriended me uh, only to take advantage of me sexually. And he was married. And so after he left my home, after we engaged in fornication, after he left my home, I was laying on the bed crying and, of course, feeling very guilty. And I actually saw, literally saw a spirit walk into my bedroom and walked from outside into the bedroom, reaching into my chest. And my heart stopped beating and I stopped breathing. Uh, and I heard a voice from heaven say, stop, and the spirit dissipated. So that was an occasion where I actually saw the demon. So I'm just giving you a few experiences. There are many, many more. People have many more uh, extensive experiences than that. But these are some of the ways that you'll know that incubi spirits are afflicting you. 
uh, what else do they do? So we talked about the violence. We talked about them restraining you. Uh, they also cause overwhelming sexual urges in the body. These urges are so strong that they completely take over your mind uh, to the extent that you may even feel insane or tormented even. When you get these kind of urges, nothing makes them go away. Taking a cold shower, shifting positions, trying to distract yourself with some activity. These urges are very powerful and um, they are all consuming. Now, I just want to say before anybody jumps to, jumps to the conclusion that I'm saying every sexual urge is demonic. That is not at all what I'm saying. There are sexual urges that happen in the body purely due to uh, an increase in hormones. Women are more sexually aroused around their cycle. Young men that begin going through puberty, they get sexually aroused and spontaneous erections. And I'm not saying that all sexual arousal or strong sexual arousal is due to the influence of a sex demon. Um, as a matter of fact, when you have these type of urges that I'm talking about that are influenced by incubi spirit, they are not normal. Uh, when sexual urges come on suddenly without warning, at times that seem inappropriate or without any stimuli, and you simply cannot control them without having an intense tormenting, and I want to focus on that word, tormenting, because these spirits torment without having an intense tormenting battle or just giving in to sexual release. That is when you know they are demonic. These types of urges are not normal. It is normal and healthy even for us to experience sexual urges. We were designed that way. We were built that way. That is a good thing. When you cannot control those urges, when they literally mentally torment you to anguish, when they distract you, when they prevent you from being productive, when you're supposed to be working, maybe doing your homework or working or putting your hand to some other task, and you are so tormented by an urge that you have to stop what you're doing to relieve yourself, or you, you tell yourself that anyway, you don't have to, but that's how you feel, or you have to go to a, into a really intense battle to make it stop. These are not normal, normal urges that are due to just hormones. These are spiritual attacks, and they will manifest themselves in your physical body the same way uh, hormonal urges do. They are just exceedingly much stronger, and I will not say enough the word tormenting. They torment you because you usually don't want it to happen, um, and if you do want it, you feel guilty about it. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to be able to cover right now uh, for this segment. Actually, I want to say one more thing. They also cause, an, uh, this is a less obvious uh, manifestation of them, but they cause nightmares as well. And just like with sexual urges, not every nightmare is the result of an incubi attack. But incubi attacks are very realistic and impressionable experiences that will make a weighty impact to you emotionally and spiritually. They are experiences that deeply disturb, not something that you get up, brush off, and forget about. Okay, so these are heart-stopping, um, very realistic, wake you out of your sleep nightmares when they're caused by incubi. And we'll talk about that more <laughs> oh man, I thought my video had stopped, but we'll talk about that more on the next segment. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of the Insights from Dr. Into. Hi, this is Prophetess Lenine Hanaya, and I'd like to welcome you to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. Well, this is segment three of my series on incubus and succubus 
Sex Demons of the Night. And there is a dedicated page to this topic on my Insights from Dr. Intimacy WordPress blog, which can be found at drintimacy.wordpress.com. And there is also a very extensive 15-page write-up on this topic uh, in my book, my latest book, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion Reference Book, which can be found on my website, drintimacy.com. Should be coming to Kindle and Amazon soon, but right now it's only on my website. Uh, and I am studying out of this book um, t years of extensive research and experience, personal experience and testimonies and working with people has led me to cover this topic. And yesterday, we uh, on the last segment, which I just recorded a couple of minutes ago, <laughs> on the last segment, I ended up talking about do they really exist, and we looked at a scripture in the Bible about that. And then I started to talk about some of the ways that incubi manifest themselves in your life. And so I left off talking about sexual urges and then moved on to dreams. And let me just go back to that a little bit. They also cause sex dreams. Now, um, sometimes you can have a sex dream that is caused by just hor a hormonal uh influx in your body. It's not always caused by spirit, but oftentimes sexual dreams are caused by the influence of sex demons. And those sex dreams are where you're actually engaged in intercourse in a dream, or you have a, an orgasm in a dream, even though you're dreaming about something non-sexual, you have an orgasm in a dream, or even a spontaneous orgasm during the day. Uh, and they also cause nightmares, and we talked about that. Very realistic, heart-stopping, gut-wrenching nightmares where you can see and hear and taste and it seems like you can even smell what's going on in the dream. And not all nightmares are caused by sex demons, but you need to know how to tell the difference. And um, incubi attacks are very realistic and impressionable experiences that will make a weighty impact. Understand that. They will make a weighty impact to you emotionally and spiritually. So if you're trying to determine, maybe you have some of these manifestations and you're not really sure if you fall into this category, because again, some people know it's very clear to them that they're being attacked. But some people like me, I didn't know. I didn't know until I did the research. And so if you're not sure, these are some words you want to remember. Tormenting, I talked about that on the last segment. Weighty impact to you emotionally and spiritually. These are experiences that deeply disturb. Okay, an encounter with an incubi spirit will leave you deeply disturbed. Even if it was a pleasurable experience, you're still going to feel pleasurable to your body. You still feel deeply disturbed, deeply in your spirit and your soul, deeply disturbed. Not something that you get up, brush off, and forget about. These experiences are very impressionable and very memorable. So these are some signs that you can look for to help you determine whether or not this is going on in your life. Now, the next question that I want to tackle is, what is their purpose? Why do these spirits come? And anybody that's been following my teachings for any length of time knows that one of the most revelatory things that, that I was able to share uh, in this ministry assignment is that spirits of sexual perversion come for a very specific reason that has a lot more to do um, with a greater assignment than, than them just influencing you into doing some type of sexual, physical act. Uh, I'd actually talk about 11 different types of demons of sexual perversion in my book. And each one of those spirits has a very specific assignment in your life. They are sent, they are skilled, they are specialists in their area to afflict you specifically in some area of your relationship with God, your productivity, your relationships with people, your self-perception, um, very specifically. And so 
what I want to talk about, any spirit that I talk about, I'm always seeking to understand what is their assignment? Why is this spirit here? What What is the objective of me being afflicted? What is the objective of the enemy of afflicting me with this spirit? What is his desired end result? What is their purpose? So I'm going to go back to the book of Genesis. We were in chapter 6. This is now verse 4 in that same chapter of Genesis in the New Living Translation. In those days and even afterward, giants lived on the earth. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with human women, this is in the Bible, I did not alter this. This is what the scripture actually says in the New Living Translation. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with human women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes mentioned in legends of old. Let me say that again. In those days and afterward, giants lived on the earth. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with human women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes mentioned in legends of old. So in other words, when these demon spirits had sex with the women, the women gave birth to abnormal children. And that speaks so loudly to the assignment of these spirits. These spirits come to impregnate you. That is their purpose. They want to impregnate you. Incubi spirits that we deal with today, sex demons, these are the same class of demon that we read about in Genesis chapter 6. And their objective at that time was to impregnate the women. And their objective is the same now. Uh, the, the, the devil doesn't have any new tricks. He wanted to impregnate them and he wants to impregnate you. Only now his agenda is to impregnate you spiritually. Not so much physically so that you would give birth to a giant. But he wants to impregnate you uh, spiritually. And so what happens is once these, these spirits... Uh, get you sexually aroused and they subdue you either through the sexual pleasure that you're experience, experiencing or through violence. You let your, your guard down. You let your conscious guard down and you kind of let them have their way. And that is when they plant their seeds in your subconscious uh, where it will go unnoticed for a season of time. And uh, remembering that analogy of these spirits being likened unto a rapist. Well, think about a young girl that is molested, like the letter that I read uh, in the last segment from Gizmo. She said she was molested from the ages of 12, 10 to 12. Well, think about a young girl that is molested. Once she gives in to her molester, once she gives in to that, that man that is victimizing her, he releases his seed into her. And once that seed goes into her, after that encounter is over with, she can't see the seed anymore. She can't see the molester. She can't see the seed. But that seed goes into her body, and it could be changing her in major ways. She may have contracted an STD, or she could be pregnant. Um, and so that's what happens when these incubi spirit impregnate you with their purpose for being in your life, it goes unnoticed for a while. Just like a, a woman who becomes pregnant, she doesn't know that she's pregnant for quite some time. She may be two months down, down the road in her pregnancy before she even realizes it. Uh, these spirits, their impregnation is like carbon monoxide. You don't even realize that it's going on until whatever they've implanted in you becomes so big that it is disturbingly obvious. And so these spirits want to impregnate you and they want to do so suddenly so that the seed can grow inside of you. That is the objective. When a woman is pregnant, if you've ever been pregnant or you, you've been close to someone during a pregnancy that is high risk, you know the main agenda and objective of those doctors that are caring for that pregnant woman is to keep that seed inside of her belly for as long as possible. If a woman is, is threatening to go into pre preterm labor or premature labor, the obstruction, the, the 
obstetrician wants to keep that seed in the womb as long as pos possible where it can grow and get strong so that when she gives birth, it is strong enough to live outside of the body. Now, how powerful is that? See, these, these spirits want to impregnate you. They want it to go unnoticed. They don't want you to, to know that you've been impregnated so that by the time you, you realize it, that in order to get rid of whatever they've done to you, you actually have to get a late-term abortion. And I don't mean that literally. I'm not promoting abortion. I'm talking about spiritually. You know, even though that abortion is illegal in this country, it's illegal to get an abortion after a certain stage in the pregnancy. You can't get a third trimester abortion because at that time, giving birth to that child, it, it would actually be able to live on its own. It's strong enough to live on its own. And so, and, and late term abortions are much riskier. They're much more dangerous to the mother. Uh, and so that's what these, these spirits want. So they, they want to impregnate you. They don't want you to notice it until that seed that they've planted in you has grown so big that you can give birth to something that will continue to grow on its own. Um, very powerful. So they want to multiply. The, the point of impregnation is always multiplication. It is always to reproduce after your own kind. Very powerful. Um, so what do they do to you? Uh, these spirits want to control you, subdue you, and make you feel worthless. Although they are skilled at causing extreme sexual pleasure, and Gizmo wrote about that in her letter in the last segment. She talked about the extreme pleasure she was experiencing uh, with this spirit that felt so good to her. She doesn't even want to have sex with her husband anymore. And she's actually looking for this spirit to come and give her that pleasure. Um, but although they are skilled at causing extreme sexual pleasure, they will make you feel miserable in every other way. Uh, the ecstasy that you experience with these, these spirits is usually exceedingly more intense than most natural sex and is highly addictive. Because of the pleasure your body experiences, you are induced with guilt, which lowers your resistance even more. Just as your natural body is fatigued at, after intercourse, uh, an encounter with an incubus or succubus spirit will usually leave you feeling emotionally and spiritually drained because they steal virtue from you. In place of what they steal, they impregnate you with their seeds of perversion and lust. And so what an incubi spirit, what do they want to impregnate you with? Well, negative emotions, first and foremost. They want to make you feel bad, uh, guilty, condemned, worthless, bad, negative, any kind of negative feeling. And then they want to steal virtue from you. These spirits want to steal the goodness from you, the positive energy, the joy, the positive outlook on life. They want to take that from you and impregnate their principles, their thoughts, their ways instead. So that is the purpose of Incubi Spirit. That is why they come. Uh, on the next segment, I'm going to talk about why they cause nightmares. What is the, what is the purpose of that? Why? What are they attempting to impregnate you with through causing nightmares? So that is my timer. Time is up for this segment. Thanks again for joining me, Dr. Intimacy, on the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast. I'm going to continue with this series, so make sure you check back for the next upload and uh, check out my book. You can get a lot of information about it uh, in the book and on the blog. Thanks again for joining me. Hi, thank you so much for joining me, Prophetess Lenine Hanaya, on another webcast of Insights from Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. Well, today I'd like to pick up where I left off in the fourth session on the series on Incubus and Succubus. 
sex demons and if this is the first video that you're seeing I want to let you know that if you visit my channel you will see all of the videos in this series there's been three recorded so far this is the fourth in the series so please follow along it, it's um, it really builds from from session to session and it will be much more enriching if you go back and look at the prior videos but I want to pick up where I left off um, and what I like to do on some of these sessions is just start off with a comment from my blog page uh, drintimacy.wordpress.com blog because that is really where this study in this series began is on the blog and the loud cry for help that came to me on that blog is what really prompted me uh, to do this is what really caused me to press in and seek the Lord for answers about this and so one of the latest comments I just want to read to you is really brief um, it says I am glad that this forum exists sadly the church does not want to deal with or minister in the area of deliverance there are people who care for those hurting and being tormented Yet, not everyone who has these type of manifestations and attacks often do not know where to turn for help. For those seeking help, continue to seek until you are set free. Blessings, Roger. Um, and that comment was left just a couple of days ago, day before yesterday. And Roger, thank you so much for commenting commenting on the blog and I'm really glad that the forum exists as well so that people can know that they're not alone alone in this struggle that it is a legitimate issue that needs to be addressed so what I want to do is I want to pick up where we left off I've actually been doing some studying out of the Bible and also my book the spirits of sexual perversion a reference book where there is a dedicated chapter to this topic and when we last left off, uh, I was talking about <clears throat> what is the purpose of incubus and succubus spirits? Why do these, which are basically lost demons, why do they come? What, what is their assignment? What is the enemy's objective in sending these spirits into your life? And we learned that the, the objective was for them to impregnate you. They actually want to leave their seed in you they want something to grow inside of you that you will eventually give birth to that can live on its own in other words they want to reproduce after their own kind they want to multiply in you and through you and so that is the purpose of incubus and succubus spirits and I'll go back and talk a little bit about uh, how, what do they they do to you and incubus spirits they they want to control you subdue you and make you feel worthless and that's really really important to understand that they are really coming to affect your self perception they really want to affect your sense of self worth for you to lose your identity uh, in Christ for you to lose sight of the value that you have in Christ and so they really want to make you feel worthless and that's really important to understand because somebody who doesn't recognize their own value will tolerate just about anything and that is the purpose of them making you feel worthless um, some people want more information about how they can know if they've been attacked by an incubi spirit because sometimes it's very obvious sometimes it's not and one of the things that you can know about this is that the sexual pleasure that you get from these attacks is usually a significantly more intense than natural sex. Um, these spirits have the ability to cause extreme sexual pleasure, which actually can be very addictive. And then, um, just like with natural sex, after an encounter with an incubi spirit, um, you will, with incubi spirits, you will feel very drained, um, worn out. Um, you may feel some symptoms in your body. And one of the things that you want to know, you're going to be fatigued just like you would after natural sex. 
but that drained feeling that you have it's really kind of a it's more than just feeling sleepy or tired it is a drained fatigued type of feeling something that you almost feel like you can't recover from like you can't recuperate and that drained feeling that comes is from them coming to steal virtue from you they want to steal the virtue of God from you they want to steal that goodness from you that positivity that hope that joy the virtue of the fruit of the spirit they come to steal and so the enemy come but to still kill and destroy and so incubi spirits come to steal that virtue and they leave something else in place of that and that is the seed that they impregnate you with now, I also talked about in, in the last segment uh, how they uh, can also be responsible for nightmares. And I want to talk a little bit about why they would want to cause nightmares. What does that benefit? And these are not sexual dreams, but actual nightmares. And I talked about those very realistic, heart-throbbing, disturbing, cannot forget type of nightmares. And the purpose of them causing nightmares is actually to impregnate you with fear, therefore perverting your faith. Remember, these are spirits of perversion. Uh, perversion basically meaning to turn away from the right, uh, from the right way to actually use misuse something. Um, and they want to, these are spirits of perversion, and the reason that they want to cause nightmares is to actually pervert your faith and this is really powerful now they want to impregnate you with fear uh, one of the reasons that they do that is that fear causes you to seek comfort and one of the one of the most common ways that people will comfort themselves in the flesh is through sexual activity so by impregnating you with fear it is that much easier to draw you into more acts of sexual sin um, when you're awake and uh, masturbation and sexual fantasy are two of the biggest pitfalls of self-comfort that is used to that people use to help themselves get through fear because masturbation and sexual fantasy does provide that that false sense of temporary control you do feel like you're in control you do get to escape your reality for a brief period of time and and so by impregnating you with fear now they're able to induce you to commit more acts of sexual sin but there's something even more powerful about them impregnating you with fear and that is what it says in the bible that Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So by impregnating you with fear, they are perverting your faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So therefore, they are undermining your entire relationship with him, your joy, even your purpose for being alive. The whole duty of man is to serve God, it says in the book of Ecclesiastes. And so if it becomes impossible to please God, you, you lose your sense of purpose. Um, and once a, a human being loses that sense of purpose, hopelessness and despair sets in. And so many people begin to have thoughts of suicide and even carry it out when that happens. And so this is so deep, so significant, and, and so major. Um, and, and if it's impossible um to, to let, let's look at this other scripture um, if it's true that all things are possible to them that believe as it says in mark 9 23 then the opposite is also true so without faith we cannot believe anything which means we cannot accomplish anything because nothing is possible to us in our subconscious minds this is very, very powerful. People that are afflicted by these spirits will experience a tremendous amount of failure in life. This, this is so important. Listen to this. And may even feel cursed with bad luck. It's not bad luck. 
It is simply that your belief system has been perverted. Yes, people that suffer these attacks will experience extreme failure in life. Uh, and, and it's because these spirits actually pervert your faith to the extent where it is difficult, if not impossible, for you to believe anything. And all things are possible to him who believes. If you can't believe anything, then you can't accomplish anything. And with the fear that they bring into your life, it essentially, it robs you and strips you of your faith. It, it takes the power away of that faith. And uh, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And so these spirits are actually interfering with your entire walk with God, your ability, your ability to believe, your calling, your ability to minister, success in your family, success in business, success, success in health, um, even your ability to walk uprightly and live a sin-free life. And typically you're going to be having uh, some major struggles in other areas in your life. If you're being frequented by these spirits, this won't be your only issue. But yeah, that extreme sense of failure, that feeling that things are never going to work out, that, that, that sense that everything is always sabotaged, it seems like it's going well, it seems like you have a breakthrough, and then everything falls apart, that is commonly a result of the presence uh, or the workings of incubi spirits, these lust demons perverting your faith. So really, really powerful stuff. Uh, I definitely encourage you to continue to follow this series. If you're having any of these encounters, any of these attacks, continue to follow this series. Go back and check out the videos that you missed. Keep up with the videos. I'll be posting a couple every week. And check out the blog, drintimacy.wordpress.com, where you can get a lot more information. And then you may want to visit my website, drintimacy.com, where you can pick up a copy of my book, um, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion, the reference book. And, and just continue to follow along and feel free to contact me um, if, you, if you like prayer or you have a specific question or comment, feel free to contact me. And I thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Intimacy, on this webcast of the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube show. And I'll see you next time. Hi, this is Prophetess Lenina Naya, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Insights from Dr. Intimacy webcast, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. So glad you were able to join me again. And I am going to be continuing with my series on incubus and succubus sex demons and this is session five. There are four videos that were recorded prior to this. And I definitely encourage you to go back and look at those four prior videos. This is actually session five. And on the last session, I left off talking about why incubi spirits want to induce nightmares. And we're going to move on to another, uh, another topic of study with these spirits. And we're going to deal with the question in this segment, where do they come from? How do these spirits get into your life? Because not everybody experiences these types of attacks. And as a matter of fact, people that don't experience these attacks may find it very strange or odd um, or unbelievable kind of for people that do experience it. So I would really like to talk about how these spirits get into your life so that if you are a person that is suffering from this, or it might be your child or your husband, or you may be called to some type of deliverance ministry, this knowledge is powerful. You need this information to help yourself and to help others. So let's study where these spirits uh, come from. Now let's remember that these, these are just spirits of sexual lust. They're commonly referred to as incubus, succubus, spirit husband, spirit wife, 
marine spirit, sex demon, night demon. But at the end of the day, they are demons of sexual lust. These are spirits of perversion and lust. So I talked about lust quite a bit in my book that I'm studying from right now, the Spirits of Sexual Perversion reference book. There's an entire chapter dealing with lust so in-depthly. It is so empowering. But here in this chapter, I just give a brief definition of lust. Definition one, lust is a desire for, for illegal pleasure. Okay, lust is a desire for, for illegal pleasure. Definition number two, lust is the willingness to meet a natural and legal need or desire in an illicit or sinful way. So it's either a desire for illegal pleasure or a desire to meet something that's natural and legal, but to meet it in an illicit or illegal way. Um, the bottom line is this, lust is sin and sin is disobedience to God's law of righteousness. This is what most people miss in the struggle for deliverance from night demons. There is some open door of disobedience in your life if these spirits are still able to afflict your body. So it's really important to remember these are lust demons. And lust is sin. Lust is disobedience to Yahweh's will, to his righteousness, to his way. And so don't miss that. Don't, don't allow yourself to be the victim because there are so many people who love to be the victim and they don't want to participate in their own deliverance. And even some people feel like these spirits having a name, incubus, succubus, uh, spirit husband, spirit wife, allows them to feel sorry for themselves like they are the victim of these big old bad powerful demons but ultimately we're victims of our own sinful choices and and what happens to our lives when we make those choices for disobedience so the truth is that no spirit can rape you that means to forcefully do anything with your body unless you allow it to that means that somehow you gave this demon access to you. And I know that's really hard to hear because you may be saying, no, I don't want these spirits here. But yes, yeah, somehow through your disobedience, through some area of disobedience, rebellion, or lust in your life, you gave these spirits access to you. A spirit can't just come and rape you. Um, they don't have the access or the authority to physically afflict you that way. And that's why they are spirits. Um, and so what kind of disobedience can bring these type of spirits into your life? Any kind. Any type of disobedience whatsoever. It doesn't even have to do anything with sexuality. You don't have to be committing some type of sexual sin. If you are committing a sexual sin, then it's obvious. But you don't have to be committing a sexual sin to invite these demons to invade your body. Um, it can be any type of disobedience. And that part is, is the most difficult part for people. It, it, it's easy when the sin issues are apparent. You're, you can say, okay, well, this is probably why this demon has come into my life. But when you don't have those apparent sin issues, when you don't have any sexual sin, obvious sexual sin in your life, people that are living the best that they know, how they, they feel like they're serving the Lord, they're doing everything right to the best of their ability, and they are still afflicted and attacked by these spirits. It's those people that are really perplexed and confused about why this is happening. But anybody that is, is involved in any type of disobedience, which is, hello, the whole world. <laughs> so anybody can have an open door for these spirits. Now, the, the enemy doesn't afflict to everybody the same way. We all, he has the access to anybody that is committing acts of disobedience, but he's going to afflict people in different ways. And so this is just one of the ways that he afflicts people that has doors of disobedience in their life. Um, and let's break that down a little bit more. Let's look at this scripture. And this is really to help those people 
that are in the church, there are a lot of ministers that go through this, prayer warriors, people that are in the five-fold ministry, people that are serving in ministry, people that are married. Now that everybody that is, is dealing with this has some type of other sexual issue, some people are really what we would consider a model Christians experiencing this. And so I want to help you particularly with this next statement. Um, let's look at the scripture here. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Okay. Now the term world in this scripture means the sin nature of the flesh and the carnal life as being separated from submission to God's Holy Spirit and his will. Let's say that again. The sin nature of the flesh and the carnal life as being separated from submission to God's Holy Spirit and his will. Your flesh is a part of the world. And the nature of your flesh is evil. It always has been and it always will be. And that's really important to understand. So that means that the open door could be something that you're not doing to subdue the nature of your flesh. Maybe you're not reading enough. You're not studying enough. You're not praying enough. It doesn't have to be something that you're doing. It could be something that you're not doing just to suppress and subdue that that natural uh, sin nature that we all have. This physical body is a part of this world. It is a part of the cursed world. That's why these bodies die, because they are part of the curse. It is the spirit that was renewed to life. It was the spirit of you resurrected to new life in Christ. And through that spirit, we have to put the sin nature of the flesh to death constantly. And so no matter how good you're trying to live, the sin nature of your flesh is not going to change. And if you're not doing enough to subdue that nature, if you're not doing enough to bring that sin nature subject to the will and the holiness of Yahweh, um, that can be an open door. It could, something that you're doing, of course, could be an open door. Sexual sin or living a life of compromise. There may be compromise in your life somewhere. There could be people around you that are engaged in, in sexual sin or other things that you know they shouldn't be involved in, but you allow yourself to fellowship and congregate with them without challenging that lifestyle or there could be something going on in your life that really represents a compromise to the principles of God's word and that could be an open door as well uh, it could even be sin that only lives in your mind uh, as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so even if you contemplate now this doesn't mean a fleeting sinful thought we all have fleeting sinful thoughts but a sin that lives, notice what I said, sin that lives in your mind. This, this is something that you're contemplating, that you're desiring. Um, and if, if you could somehow do it, you might actually carry it out. So this is sin that you actually give thoughtful consideration to. Um, so these are some open doors um, that are really, really important for you to take note of because this can affect you no matter how uprightly you think you're walking any type of disobedience in your life can leave these doors open and it seems to be and there was even a study done on it I saw on another website that I won't cite because um, I don't know if I'm quoting the information exactly exactly accurate but the study that I read was saying that it is mostly Christian women that are attacked by these spirits and you know it would be just like the enemy to come and try to undermine the faith of the godly why afflict those that are already participating in sexual sin he's already got them you know, he, he, you're already his slave if you are willfully participating in sexual sin. And so it, it's just like him to try to undermine the faith of the godly, to try to steal the virtue of somebody that is trying to live a godly life that wants to serve the Lord. 
He wants to take that away from you. You want to remember that these spirits come to make you feel worthless. He wants you to question your self-worth, your, your value to the body of Christ. He wants to redefine your self-perception. So don't think it's strange that you are living an upright life and these spirits are coming to afflict you. It is very intentional, very deliberate. You have to understand this warfare that we're fighting, I mean, we have a powerful enemy that is roaring, that roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, whom he may, who gives him permission, that's what it means, whom he may devour, who's going to give him permission to devour him. So when he shows up for you, you have to say, oh no, you may not devour me. And so all of this information is really important, paying attention to those open doors. If you are truly serious about getting delivered from night demons, you are going to have to take accountability for not being in your place of authority over these spirits and allowing them access to you through your actions. Man, I just need to say that again. If you are truly serious about getting delivered from night demons, then you are going to have to take accountability for not being in your place of authority over these spirits and allowing them access to you through your actions. You have to be willing to really examine your heart and your lifestyle in the light of God's truth and find that open door. So this is your responsibility. You have to do it. You have to take accountability. You've got to find the open door. You can't continue to be the victim. Don't keep saying, I don't know how this is happening to me. I don't know what to do. No, I'm telling you what you need to do. You need to examine your own heart. The heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 5, 9. You've got to examine yourself. Find those open doors in the light of of God's truth, examine yourself and have him show you what is what is off in your spirit that is allowing these attacks to happen. Because once that open door is revealed, you can slam it shut in the name of Yeshua and by the power of his blood, never to be afflicted again. And if they ever do come back, you know how they got in. It's much easier to get victory if you're ever revisited. So that's going to be it for this segment of uh, Insights from Dr. Intimacy. I thank you for joining me and look forward to, to you joining me again on the next segment. Hi, this is Prophetess Lenine Hanaya, and I'd like to welcome you to another Insights from Dr. Intimacy webcast with your host, Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. Well, thanks so much for joining me again. And I actually will be continuing in this segment with my series on Incubus and Succubus, Sex Demons. And this is the sixth segment, the number six in this series. There are five other segments that have been recorded. I definitely encourage you to take a look at those other recordings on uh, my YouTube channel. But I'm going to pick up right where I left off and I hope that I'll be able to cover everything that I wanted to share about these spirits tonight because... When in the last segment, in segment five, I talked about open doors, disobedience and different type of open doors. And anybody that's really seeking deliverance is going to have to take accountability for not being in that proper place of authority to keep the doors closed. So somehow you open the door and gave the spirit access to you or the person that you're working with or your loved one that you're praying for. They gave the spirit access so what I want to do in this segment is actually talk about some of those open doors. Let's let's reveal what some of those doors are. And again, I've been studying out of my book, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion Handbook, which I just want to show on the screen. And it's backwards because I have the mirror image on my uh, camera. But uh, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion the Reference Book which you can find on my website, drintimacy.com. There's a dedicated chapter to this study um, in this book, as well as many other wonderful things, a dedicated chapter to fornication, masturbation, prostitution, homosexuality, 
incest, um, rape, pornography, on and on and on. So there's a lot of great information in here. It is the reference book on uh, sexuality and perversion talks about intimacy what it really is a chapter on marriage so it's a great great book that can help you with this topic and so many other things but what i want to do is get into I'm, I'm still in chapter 18 dealing with this this topic and i want to talk about some of the open doors so let's get right into it uh fornication fornication is a word that can cover any type of or act of perversion, including adultery, incest, homosexuality, etc. Okay, so fornication is not what we really think it is. We tend to think of fornication as having sex outside of marriage, but um, that's really an oxymoron, and that's for another webcast that I'm going to do. But fornication is a, in the Bible, it is a generalized term that covers sexual perversion or sexual immorality. So that can be any type of sexual immorality. Um, you relinquish your authority over sexual lust when you willfully involve yourself with sexual perversion. So when you willfully involve yourself in any type of fornication, you are you will, willingly, you're giving your authority to those spirits of lust. Okay, next open door, masturbation. Masturbation is particularly inviting when it comes to the invasion of night demons because through masturbation, you sin against your own body and subject it to evil. You become a slave to sin through masturbation. So masturbation is a wide open door, very inviting doorway. Um, next door, pornography. Pornography is also particularly damaging when it comes to these attacks. Pornography is an act that specifically aims to contaminate your mind. The reason that these spirits come primarily at night is because our conscious minds shut down when we are tired and when we are sleeping. It thus leaves us vulnerable to their control and weakens our resistance to evil. So this is what makes pornography so damaging. Listen to this phrase right here. Whatever you fill your mind with during your waking hours will reign over you while you sleep. That's powerful. <clears throat> Whatever you fill your mind with during your waking hours will reign over you while you sleep. Okay? Your conscious mind is subdued when you're tired or sleeping. It's your subconscious mind that kicks in. And whatever you have filled yourself with during your waking hours is lodged in your subconscious. Um, and it rains over you while you sleep. So that is so important. Okay, next doorway, unforgiveness and bitterness. Unforgiveness cuts you off from God's grace and therefore his ultimate protection. Bitterness gives access to every demon of hell to invade your temple and your life. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I'm going to do a whole teaching on on unforgiveness and bitterness and how it affects our lives. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says it, if you don't forgive others, that your father is not going to forgive you. And without his forgiveness, you don't have his protection. And so if you're holding unforgiveness and bitterness in your life toward anyone, you are completely undermining any effort that you're making to live right, to be blessed, to, to be anointed, you are you are destroying yourself. You are, you are actually committing suicide. Unforgiveness and bitterness is suicide. And it is a wide open door, not only for incubus spirits, but for every demon to afflict you. Okay, next door, carnality. This one is a really important. Spending too much time doing non-spiritual activities, even if those activities are not sinful. And that's really important. People tend to think that carnality is some form of sin, but not necessarily. It's not a sin of commission. Sometimes it's just a sin of omission. In other words, it's not a sin that you actually commit doing something. A lot of times carnality is when you're not doing something that you should do. So any activity that does not purposefully and deliberately 
build and edify your spirit man in the things of God is a carnal activity. So again, not necessarily sinful, but it's carnal if it's not deliberately building you up. Remember, we are vulnerable in our minds during the night hours or times of fatigue. Our decision-making process is impaired during these times. That is when we must totally rely on the strength of our spirit man to keep us from evil. If we do not build our spirit man up, then it will not be strong enough to yield to the Holy Spirit and access his empowerment. So the reason that carnality is a door is because you have to build your spirit man up strong enough to carry you through those weakened, fatigued moments, those emotional moments, those moments of impaired judgment. It, it is when your mind is not consciously thinking about being righteous or walking in righteousness that the strength of your spirit man has to kick in. And if you haven't built that spirit man up, how can you expect it to carry you? How can you expect it to empower you during times of temptation? So that's a big open door. <clears throat> fear and doubt. Another open door. Fear and doubt. Having fear and doubt in your life opens the door to these spirits because they thrive on fear and aim to increase fear in your life. They want you to be afraid because fear paralyzes you and robs you of your faith, which ultimately robs you of your relationship with God and your purpose. And I talked a lot about that in the last segment, how they impregnate you with fear to pervert your faith, to strip you of your purpose, and to bring failure into your life. Another open door, big open door here, witchcraft. The Bible says that rebellion is as witchcraft. Rebellion is another word for disobedience. Thus, in all simplicity, witchcraft is to go against God's way to do it your own way. Okay, so witchcraft is as unto rebellion. That means that you deliberately rebel against God's way to do it your own way so that you can control the outcome the way you want it to come out uh, in your favor and not mindful of the will of God. There are many manifestations of witchcraft that are overlooked, such as astrology, superstitions, palm reading, and chain letters. Yes, chain letters. An especially common but overlooked form of witchcraft is manipulation. Okay, manipulation is when you are controlling other people. You're deliberately trying to control what they say, what they do, how they think, how they feel, to get them to line up with what you want. Uh, manipulating our children and our spouses and others that are close to us is so common. And it's really, really common, especially amongst mothers and wives. Uh, and it leaves the door open for night demons to attack. So you have to be really careful of that because I know as a mom, you know, we can really have a tendency to manipulate our children. And it's well-meaning, but it's not right. And it's a huge open door for not only incubi and succubi, uh, incubi attacks in your life, but also for witchcraft curses to land on you and be very successful. A curse without a cause does not come, and witchcraft cannot prevail in your life unless you have an open door for it. And manipulation is a huge door for somebody else to afflict you with witchcraft. So please be mindful of that. Another open door, sexual abuse. Being molested or sexually abused opens doors in three ways. First, it open it excuse me first it often attaches spirits of perversion to the abused secondly it subjects the abused to a mindset of victimization in other words you constantly see yourself as a victim remember night demons are sexual aggressors and they want you to feel victimized thirdly molestation is another doorway for fear in your life so um sexual abuse is huge uh, number one, it can actually implant demons in the life of the one that is abused, being transferred from the abuser to the abused. It gives you that victim mindset, and they really aim to make you feel like a victim, these spirits. And um, it, it also uh, induces fear. So those are three big doors. 
verbal and emotional abuse. It doesn't just have to be sexual abuse, verbal and emotional abuse. Remember that these spirits are likened to abusive spouses and rapists, meaning that being a victim of child or domestic abuse can definitely introduce these spirits into your life. Any abusive situation is a very comfortable environment for these demons. So any kind of abuse that you're suffering can open these doors in the same way that sexual abuse does. Um, emotional wounds. Here's another big door. Emotional wounds. I say again that these demons are taking advantage of weaknesses. Being wounded leaves us weak and therefore leaves us vulnerable to these attacks. That is why it is so important to get healed. And that's another big factor in unforgiveness and bitterness. You cannot heal when you are unforgiving and bitter. And if you don't heal, you are vulnerable to so many attacks. Uh, another big door, soul ties. Even if you don't have any of these other doors open in your life, soul ties. If you are soul tied to someone or something or some place that causes you to be spiritually weak, or that is subject to sexual perversion or fear, you have now created an open door for night demons. When your soul is tied, there is easy transfer to and from the thing that you are tied to. When your soul is tied, there is easy transfer to and from the thing that you are tied to. And so whatever is going on in the life or in the environment of that soul tie can now easily transfer itself to you very powerful so your environment your company good company uh bad company corrupts good character it says in the bible and in the, in the book of corinthians so very important and the last one spiritual warfare the last thing <clears throat> um, that you need to look out for is is about spiritual warfare bearing in mind once again that night demons take advantage of the vulnerability factor you have to remember that spirit Hi, and welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast with your host, Prophetess Lenin Hanaya, a.k.a. Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a spirit, soul, body perspective. I am so glad that you joined me today. Uh, what I would like to do today is actually continue with this series on incubus and succubus sex demons. And this is actually the seventh segment in this series. It has been very powerful so far. There's been a great response to it. And I have really enjoyed sharing my heart, sharing my experiences, sharing the experiences of some of my followers. But more importantly than that, sharing the in-depth revelation that the Father has given me through my time and praying and studying about this topic. Um, and it has been actually about two weeks since I posted the last segment. And since there has been such a great lapse, what I'd like to do is just recap some of what has been discussed so far to catch everybody up. And then we'll just flow into the next part of the teaching. So I want to start by saying that I decided to do the teaching on Incubus and Succubus on YouTube because of the overwhelming response that I got to the article that I posted on my blog. And my blog has been up, uh, which can be found at drintimacy.wordpress.com. Um, I posted that article on my blog, and since the blog has been up just a little bit over a year now, there have been over 31,000 hits on the blog, and I would venture to say at least 80% of the activity on my blog is people that are coming to look for information on Incubus and Succubus, uh, which are sex demons. They also go by the name of Spirit Husband, Spirit Wife, Marine Spirit, and Night Demons. And um, even though they go by all of those names, one of the things that you learn in this series is that they are simply demons of sexual lust. They are very, very powerful spirits of sexual lust that um, are sometimes called by those names. But the names are not important. The assignment is what really matters. And so this being the seventh segment, I really strongly encourage you, if you haven't seen the other six segments, please 
go back. Each one is about 15 minutes. It will take you about 90 minutes to go through all six segments, but it is so important. If you are dealing with this issue, if you have a loved one that's dealing with it, if it's a spouse or a child, if you are in ministry, if you're a ministry leader, uh, I, I promise you that you have followers, whether they have said it to you or not, that are dealing with this issue and they are going to want some information on how they can get delivered. They want some understanding about what they're going through. So please go back and watch all of the segments. Um, it is not a haphazard um random talking in each segment. It's actually a curriculum that I'm following. Uh, and so each segment builds on the next. You learn something and then we build on it in the next segment. So it really would be advantageous and beneficial for you to watch all segments with pen and paper. You definitely want to have a notebook, go through and take some notes. And the curriculum that I'm studying from is actually out of my own book that I wrote. Really the Holy Spirit wrote it through me. But it's the Spirits of Sexual Perversion reference book. You can grab this on my website drintimacy.com, drintimacy.com, and I've been studying out of chapter 18 of this book, and of course the Bible as well, uh, using some scriptures too, um, but it, there's a really in-depth 15-page uh, chapter on incubus and succubus in the book, and we've been, I've been strategically taking you through that chapter to open up this revelation. And, uh, and so that's a quick recap. What I want to do is read a letter from from one of the bloggers this is actually a comment that was left on the blog and i like to do that because for the people that are watching right now that are experiencing these attacks i want you to know that you're not alone you're not the only one going through this um by far and for those that have never experienced this you've never experienced being attacked by a sex demon um it may sound ludicrous to you when somebody else says it. Um, you may even think they're crazy, <laughs> but there are a lot of people experiencing this and I personally have experienced it. It is very, very real. And so, in some of these segments, I, I have read some of the comments from the bloggers and I'm gonna do that again in this segment to let you know there are a lot of people out there experiencing this. And I started the first session off reading one of those comments. And let's do that again tonight. This is a comment that was left by somebody named Trevor on the blog. And he says, I've been dealing with this same issue since 2004, since I recommitted my life to Christ. I am in ministry, very discouraged, and rarely get a good night's sleep due to the oppression, torment, headaches, etc., can't even begin to describe the horrific things that I have went through over the years. I have read numerous books, sought counseling from those in deliverance ministries, went through a deliverance session, combined with fasting and prayer, very, very tired and drained most of the time, very disappointed, not sure what to do anymore. I wish there was a big red button that said, push here for immediate deliverance. I'd have taken advantage of that a long time ago. I applaud you for writing about this, Dr. Intimacy. Wish there were more of you in the church today, as I'm tired of having to defend the reality of my experiences to so-called believers. God save us from them and deliver me from these evil spirits and all the strongholds open doors within my mind and body. Amen. And again, that was from somebody who called himself Trevor. And that's so heartbreaking to me. There are actually hundreds of comments very similar to that on the blog. Um, and those are the ones that you can see. I, I don't post them all. Some of them are too graphic. I get them by email. I get them by text. I get them on Facebook. Um, and so this is really, really serious. And I really had a passion in my heart to help people with this issue. So if you go back, uh, segment one, I, I talk about whether or not these demons are real, do they really exist? And we, we're talking out of scripture. I talk about how they manifest themselves. What is their purpose? Why do they come? And in the last couple of segments, I was actually talking about 
how they get in. How do these spirits show up? Where do they come from? So I want to do a quick recap on, um, and maybe it won't be so quick, <laughs> but I want to recap the 13 open doors that I discussed in segment six about how these spirits actually enter into your life. Um, first, fornication. Fornication is sexual immorality. It's not what we think sex outside of marriage. That is a very narrow-minded definition of fornication. Fornication is a generalized term in the Bible that covers all types of sexual immorality. So any type of sexual perversion, sexual sin, whether it be physical, hom homosexual activity, masturbation, if it's sexual fantasy, all of that opens the door for these spirits to afflict you. Uh, masturbation, we talked about that, was a huge open door. Masturbation, um, most people know, um, involves you stimulating yourself with your hands um, to sexually stimulate yourself or try to achieve orgasm. But understand that masturbation does not have to involve your hands. Anything that you are doing to deliberately sexually stimulate yourself with or without your hands with another person involved, even if it's all just in your mind and, um, and flexing those muscles down there, that is masturbation that opens the door. Pornography was a big, huge open door. Um, pornography opening the door for those spirits to come in, weakening your spiritual defenses, filling your conscious mind up um, with sexual images that then get lodged into your subconscious so that those subconscious thoughts of, of sexual immorality rule over you while you're asleep. And that's a big open door. And then we talked about unforgiveness. Uh, if you're going to carry unforgiveness in your life, you might as well commit suicide. Because unforgiveness is you killing yourself. You're cutting yourself off from God, from all of his blessings, from your favor, from your purpose for even being here. So unforgiveness is going to open a door for any type of spirit because you actually take yourself out of the, the, the covering of Yahweh's grace when you hold unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. And then we talked about carnality. Uh, carnality is any activity that does not deliberately build you up spiritually. So any activity that is absent of a pursuit of spiritual or kingdom things would be considered carnal. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's sinful. Uh, going to work, uh, unless you have a job that is specifically related to ministry, is carnal. It's not sinful. It's carnal. Uh, washing your dishes can be carnal. Mowing your lawn. Um, those things are not sinful, but they're not activities that are designed to build you spiritually. Remember this story in the in the Bible about Martha and Mary. Martha was carnal. She wasn't doing anything evil. She was cooking dinner to actually serve to her house guests, and that was lovely. But it was still a carnal activity that was drawing her away from intimacy um, uh, with the Father or the pursuit of deeper intimacy with Him. And, and uh, Yeshua said to, to Martha, Mary has chosen that one needful thing which shall not be taken away from her. So understand that carnality can just be getting too busy with housework, with uh, the pursuit of your career, but it can also be sinful things as well. Um, but being involved in carnality and not building up your spirit, man, through reading the scriptures, through fasting and praying, through fellowshipping with the saints can definitely become an open door. Having fear in your life, having issues of fear and unbelief in your life, fear and doubt, these spirits feed on fear. They really, really thrive in a fearful environment. And so you're going to have to use the power of love to actually overcome fear for for, for the Father has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And so you're going to have to use that, that power of love and self-control, controlling your emotions to overcome that fear, to close those doors. We talked about witchcraft. Witch, witchcraft is a big door. Um, excuse me. Witchcraft is a huge door. Um, rebellion, manipulation. Uh, horoscopes, lucky charms, all of those things, incantations, spells, Ouija boards, all of those types of things, but especially manipulation of other people. And specifically, we tend to manipulate our, those that are closest to us, our children, our spouses. And so manipulation, it was a big open door in witchcraft, sexual abuse, 
course, a very obvious door, demons being transferred to you from the abuser. And also it invokes a spirit of fear and victimization when you are abused, but also verbal or emotional abuse as well. Any type of abuse at all will is a very inviting environment for these spirits because they are abusive. So they love an abusive environment. So that's going to open a door. Then we talked about uh, emotional wounds. When you are hurting emotionally, they take advantage of that weakness. Um, you know, that emotional weakness, that woundedness prevents you from being in a posture where you are resistant to attacks. And so, you know, they are victimizers. They These are spiritual bullies and they will take advantage of that. So you must get healing in all of your wounded places. And that's why forgiveness is so important. You can't be healed if you are bitter and unforgiving towards somebody else, which is preventing them from getting their healing. And then we talked about soul ties and soul ties is really huge. Soul tie is when you are, are willfully uh, intellectually and desirably connected to a person, place, or thing when you're tied to them in order to anchor you or give you some sense of security um, when you connect yourself to somebody. So you can actually be soul tied to a person, place, or thing. And whatever you're soul tied to is going to allow for the easy transfer back and forth between you and the person, place, or thing that you are soul tied to. So if there are any fear issues or any activity of fear or perversion going on witchcraft and that soul tie that can easily be transferred to you and open a door so uh, my time is about up for this segment and i didn't even get to venture into anything new but um the next segment we're going to go into the dangers of the spirit and actually start talking about deliverance and I'm going to talk about that one more open door that got cut off in session six, which is spiritual warfare. So thanks so much for joining. And I look forward to you being with me again next time. This is Dr. Intimacy. Hi, and welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast. This is your host, Prophetess Lanin Hanaya, a.k.a. Dr. Intimacy, and I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a spirit, soul, body perspective. And this is session eight in the series that I've been doing on Incubus and Succubus. And I just actually, I think I, I may call this uh, a session 7B because <laughs> I just finished with session seven and I really didn't cover what I wanted to. So I'm going to post these back to back. So let's call this segment uh, 7B or part two of, of part seven. But um, I was talking about the different open doors and there were 13 doors that I talked about. And uh, I talked about those in segment six and it actually got cut off. The video was distorted at the end. And so I didn't actually get to share about that 13th open door, which is spiritual warfare. So I'm going to pick up right there so we don't run out on time. Um, that 13th door, and this one was really important for people that maybe don't have any obvious doors of sexual. If I name those other 12 doors, the fornication, the masturbation, the bitterness, unforgiveness, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, um, pornography, witchcraft, all of those doors that I just uh, named, emotional wounds, soul ties, carnality, fear, and you don't have any of those doors that you know of, nothing that you can see. Um, this might be the door for you, this spiritual warfare, especially if you are an intercessor or if you are a, if you are a ministry leader. Um, and remember that these spirits take advantage of weakness. These are spiritual bullies. They take advantage of your weaknesses because when you are weak, you're not able to fight with the same fervor. Um, you're not as resistant to attacks when you are weak. Uh, I know me personally, I mean, I have gotten to places in my life where I didn't even want to fight anymore. I just laid down and said, go ahead, just beat me. 
uh, you know, in a spiritual sense, you know, the warfare can become so intense sometimes when you're in leadership, um, dealing with a difficult topic and maybe you don't have the support around you that is really undergirding, undergirding you. And it can be very intense. And there have been times when I just didn't want to fight anymore. And these spirits will really take advantage of the weakness that can occur during spiritual warfare. So if you're interceding, if you're counseling, if you're preaching, if you're involved in deliverance ministry, missions, uh, missionary work, evangelism, any type of ministry work at all, um, is going to require some level of spiritual warfare which is going to weaken you and these spirits will take advantage of that and so it can be really perplexing when you are living um, what you think is a is an upright life and you're praying and, and you're living a consecrated life and you don't have any obvious open doors in your life and you're still being afflicted by these spirits it can be really perplexing and um and you may not understand, and it can be very discouraging, like the letter that I read from Trevor in the first part of this segment. But spiritual warfare weakens you, and it is so important that you are thoroughly replenished after you engage in spiritual warfare. So after you engage in intercession, after you preach, um, after you minister, after you counsel, after you pray for somebody, it is really important that you refresh yourself. Go into the Word and study for yourself. Encourage yourself. Build yourself up. Pray for yourself. Spend lots of time in praise and worship. That is your best weapon. I'm telling you, praise and worship and thanksgiving is really, really going to re replenish you and refresh you. And make sure you're getting some rest. You need to actually rest your physical body. Spiritual warfare is actually very strenuous on the physical body. Um, a lot of times the physical body emulates a lot of that warfare that is going on in the spirit. So it's important that, that, you know, some practical things have to be looked into. You need to make sure that you're getting rest, keeping your body clean, uh, and also eating a healthy diet. Make sure you're drinking enough water and, and getting the right kind of food in your body. And I know that may sound a little crazy because everything that I've been talking about has been so spiritual, but those things do affect your spirit. When your physical body is weak, it can affect your spirit because it drains you. We're a triune being. We are spirit, soul, and body, and all three are connected. And as long as we continue to live on this earth, all three will always be connected. So if your spirit is weak, it can affect your body. If your body is weak, it can affect your spirit. So take care of this physical body too, because not taking care of your physical body can weaken you spiritually. And that can become an open door for sex demons to afflict you, believe it or not. So that might be a big clue to somebody right now that is watching this and says, wow, that's what it is with me. I tried everything else. I closed all the other doors. There's no obvious uh, open sin in my life, sexual sin, and I couldn't figure it out. Well, this might be the thing for you. Just making sure that you are not over uh, exerting yourself and that you are, even Yeshua, you know, when he ministered, he went away into the mountains to pray by himself. When the, when the apostles were going crazy about the storm while they were on the boat, he was on the boat resting. So, so Jesus, Yeshua, he knew how to make sure that he replenished himself both spiritually and physically. And you need to do the same if you're going to stay strong enough to stay in this fight and to resist the, the demonic attacks that the enemy will send to destroy you. And we know what these spirits want to do. So um, those are all the open doors. Now, what I want to talk about now, what I'd like to get into now is the dangers of these spirits. You know, just recently I had somebody write me <clears throat> on YouTube in response to one of the videos and and uh, I don't remember the, the verbatim comment, but um, I think you can look at it. It's on the part one. But she says, I don't have a problem with these spirits. She says, I have a, a sex demon and we get along rather well. He makes me feel great. And 
she was actually implying that she enjoys her sex demon and I don't think that she was too pleased with my negative depiction of these spirits because she's enjoying her relationship with with what she called her sex demon as a matter of fact I believe her words were it was as if she conjured him up especially for her in other words he was custom tailored for her he understands all of her needs makes her feel great and that was really sad to me I've actually heard uh, had other people make similar comments that uh, there are some people that really enjoy engaging with these demons and they are not aware of the seriousness of the matter and so I want to just remind you these are demonic spirits the scripture says that the enemy comes for one purpose and one purpose only and that is to steal to kill and destroy to steal to kill and destroy to steal to kill and destroy that is all these spirits are coming from and sin may be pleasurable for a season yes you are going to experience some mind-blowing physical ecstasy a lot of times with these demons they're very skillful at that and that can be very addictive because it feels so good but it is so detrimental the consequences are so severe you can't take this lightly this is something that you have to take very very serious because your purpose and your life is at stake and I want to recap on you know we talked about the uh, these spirits impregnating you I think we talked about that in segment two or three what is their purpose why do they come they come to impregnate you so let's talk again about what they are impregnating you with there are four things that they want to impregnate you with they want to impregnate you with fear which is going to pervert your faith we talked about that they want to rob you of your faith without faith it is impossible to please God without faith it is impossible for you to believe if it is impossible for you to believe it is impossible for you to achieve and that means that your life is going to be full of failure that young lady that wrote me and, and talked about how much she likes her sex demon I, I wonder what her life is like right now I wonder what kind of mishaps and and um, and disappointments she's experiencing just in terms of financial failure and health failure and relationship failure because these spirits bring failure into your life by perverting your ability to believe um, they want to impregnate you with lust which will cause you to desire evil things to satisfy and fulfill your soul so they want to impregnate you with lust these are four things they're coming to impregnate you with this is the danger of these spirits they're going to impregnate you with a strong desire for evil things they're going to make you desire evil fulfillment or they're going to cause you to desire to go out and anxiously fulfill in evil ways even legitimate needs and desires and you're going to justify it by saying well i need this everybody needs this this is natural um and that's that's what these spirits are doing you know they are perverting uh and warping your understanding of right and wrong then they want to impregnate you with different spirits of perversion uh, another thing that they impregnate you with are other demonic spirits that they are carriers of other spirits these demons carry the seed of other spirits so from uh from the incubus spirit you may now be impregnated with a a, a spirit of addiction a spirit of witchcraft a spirit of psychosis a spirit we already talked about fear um, many different spirit of gluttony uh, spirit of depression spirit of suicide and so they're coming to pervert you with other types of spirits but one of their favorite things to do in terms of impregnating you with other spirits are other spirits of sexual perversion masturbation homosexuality incest pornography pedophilia 
Uh, and the reason that they want to do that is because they would like for you to engage in illicit acts of sexual activity with other people so you can spread their seed. They would like for you to connect sexually with other people because demons are transferable. I wrote a book called STD, Sexually Transmitted Demons. You need to read that book. Demons can be transmitted just like a chlamydia or a gonorrhea. They can be transferred through sex. And so these spirits like to impregnate you with other spirits of sexual perversion in hopes that you will go out and seek the fulfillment of sexual temptation and then spread spread their seed, uh, reproduce. Remember, everything's about reproduction, reproducing after their own kind. Um, and then the fourth thing that they want to impregnate you with is rebellion. They want to impregnate you with rebellion and lead you into witchcraft. Why? Why? <laughs> because that is the way that they can ultimately separate you from God eternally. So they're going to impregnate you with spirits of rebellion and witchcraft, uh, which will start off with subtle forms of witchcraft like um, uh, superstitions, manipulation for good reasons, horoscopes, which is going to escalate into things like palm reading, communicating with the stars, good luck charms. And next thing you know, it'll be full-fledged Satanism, calling on demons, uh, seances, communicating with the dead. And from there, you know, people often sell their souls out. They denounce the Lord and they are eternally damned. Uh, remember, ultimately, ultimately, the assignment of every demon is to completely disconnect you from Yahweh God, your creator, and see you eternally damned. Okay, so when we're talking about the danger of these spirits, ultimately, they want to completely separate you from your creator and see you eternally damned. So they are very dangerous, nothing to play with, nothing to enjoy. You need to get delivered, completely delivered from these lust demons. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in the next session. This segment is over. I thank you for joining me, but please, please tune in in the next segment. And we're really going to be digging into how do you get delivered now from these spirits. This is Dr. Intimacy, and thanks again for joining. Hi, and welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast with your host, Prophetess Lenine Hanaya, a.k.a. Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a spirit, soul, body perspective. Thank you so much for joining today, and today I'm going to be continuing with my series on incubus and succubus sex demons. And uh, I believe that we're actually in the the eighth session now. It's really nine videos, but uh, the last uh, segment seven was actually a two-part video. So this is the eighth uh, segment, the ninth video, but the eighth session that we're having. And I really, really am excited now because I'm down to my favorite part of this study where we're actually going to start to talk about deliverance. You have a lot of information now, and it's really important that before you talk about deliverance from anything, understanding your enemy is very important, and that is why I spent so much time talking about the spirits, how they operate, what their purpose is, what their assignment is, and you, if you've watched all, uh, all eight videos so far, should have a really in-depth understanding now of what these spirits are all about the the urgency of getting delivered from them and so now I'm actually going to give you the weapons that you need I'm going to give you the deliverance formula that you need to walk in victory over these enemies that we've been studying together and I want to start off by by reading a letter to you from my blog as I have said in sessions before this this topic of study came about because of the overwhelming response on my blog. So I want to read an encouraging letter. Most of the, the letters on the blog are sad. There are people looking for help and deliverance. But since we're going to be talking about deliverance in this segment and probably the next uh, segment or two, 
we'll still be talking about delivering. So let's start off with a very encouraging testimony that somebody left on the blog. Her name was Marie. And it says, I am so glad I found this blog. Dr. Intimacy, I am so glad you are putting this information out there to help set people free. I had so many of these experiences when I was a teen and in my 20s. I am now 35 and married to a Christian man and am completely free of this sexual possession and oppression. If you are experiencing this struggle, please know that you can be set free in Christ. Get a close personal relationship with Christ through prayer, fasting, the word, etc. Demons have to flee when you are following and claiming Christ. Pray that you will be an overcomer. Do not give in to the demons. Play Christian worship music. And in the hardest night hours or when they oppress you during the day, sing the lyrics out loud. Satan hates worship. Ask God to help you get the sin out of your life. Recently, one night, I sat on Facebook looking at MTV's pictures. I literally had a dream. I was looking at the same pictures, and the demons came into my home with fear and oppression, and I woke up. <laughs> fear. The Lord showed me that even sitting willfully and continuing to look at pictures of our wicked culture invited the demons to torment my sleep. I woke up verbally rebuking Satan in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Be free. Our families, innocent children, and future generations depend on it. Marie. Wow. Marie, thank you so much for that testimony. I mean, I just got chills reading it because you are so on point with what you're talking about. Marie touched on, uh, if you watch segment um, seven, both of the videos from segment seven, she talks about several of the open doors that we discussed in segment seven. She talks about the fear. Uh, when those spirits came to visit her, they brought fear and oppression. One of the things that I talk about, they impregnate you with. And then she talked about some key factors in getting delivered, prayer, fasting, worship, music. She talked about looking at uh, pictures on MTV. Remember, I talked about that carnality being an open door. What a powerful testimony. But in all of that, she's telling you that she is free. She was heavily afflicted by these spirits. And now she is living in freedom, enjoying her life, enjoying her relationship with uh, with her creator, with her savior, uh, Yahshua, Jesus Christ. And that is what I want for you. That is what Marie wants for you. That is what we want for you. You know, I pray. I have a prayer partner and prayer partners that I pray with. And I pray over my viewers, over my blog visitors, the people that email me and Facebook me. I want you to know that I am praying for you. We are praying for you. We are touching and agreeing for your complete and total full deliverance from every demon of oppression, every sexual demon, every demon that they've implanted in you, just every oppressing force, period, so that you can have a testimony just like Marie. But I want you to be so encouraged because she's free and I'm free. These spirits used to oppress me, but I am also free. And so you can walk in victorious freedom from these spirits. So let's talk about it. Um, the steps to deliverance. And I actually have, um, there, there are about eight steps in here that I want to talk about. And it'll probably take a couple of sessions to go through this. But let's start. Now, the first thing that I want to do before I talk about the eight steps is I just want to put a disclaimer out there. Because as I'm going through the eight steps, you're going to hear me use the word abort or abortion as I'm going through the eight steps talking about aborting the seed of these spirits. I am talking about a spiritual abortion. I am not promoting or suggesting suggesting that anyone um, do anything physical to their bodies. I don't promote abortion. I don't condone it. Um, 
And, and so I'm not talking about a physical abortion. This is a spiritual issue that we're talking about. And when I use the word abortion, I'm talking about a spiritual abortion. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. I, I don't encourage anybody to hurt their child. I'm not saying that Satan got you pregnant and you need to kill the baby. Nothing crazy like that. Uh, I'm talking about spiritually aborting these seeds of these demonic activities that uh, these spirits come to impregnate you with. And they want these, uh, these seeds to grow in you. So let's look at step one. And again... In case you haven't seen it, um, please go back and look at all of the videos. It's so important. In all of the videos, I've been reading little portions of my book, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion, a reference book. This is a thick book. It's about 300 pages, so there's a lot of power in here. Um, but you can get this from my website, drintimacy.com. book is currently out of stock, but it should be with restocked in a couple of weeks. And what you want to do is just go ahead and buy a gift certificate on the website. You'll see the option on there to do that. Buy that gift certificate because what that is going to do is to ensure that you are actually notified before the public becomes aware that the book is available. So you'll get your copy first when you buy that gift certificate. Uh, and it's also going to help the book be uh, replenished more quickly. But, um, yeah, we're looking at this book. So let me start reading. There's a dedicated chapter in here, chapter 18, 15 pages covering this topic. A lot of power. Step one, you must renounce not only the incubus and succubus spirits that have entered into your life, but you must also renounce their works. You need to verbally destroy and renounce and murder everything that they have conceived within you and caused you to give birth to. If you fail to do this, they will always have access to you. This is done through declaring the blood of Yahshua and the word of God out loud. <clears throat> now, this is really important because a lot of people, uh, I read a letter from Trevor in, in session seven. He said he went to a deliverance session. Well, it's not enough just to cast out a demon or to break the oppression of a demon. You need to denounce also their works because for however long these spirits have been with you, they have trained and shaped and molded you in a certain way. And so even if you successfully cast the spirit out or you break the stronghold of the spirit, if their works are still operative in you, it keeps the door wide open for them to come right back. It's, it's as if you have flies in the house and you shoo all of the flies out of the house, but you leave the door wide open. Well, hello, they're going to come back in. And so you need to denounce the work of these spirits. You need to denounce every seed, murder every seed that they've planted in your life, every spirit that has attached themselves to you through these incubi attacks and the way that you do that really important thing that you want to do is take a dedicated communion okay and there's a really powerful article on my blog about the practice of communion and how it breaks sexual ties and um <clears throat> You can actually, I think there's a video on the YouTube channel about it too, actually, Sexual Blood Covenants, but also the article really goes into it, and it's in the Understanding Intimacy series on the featured articles page. But you want to take communion, a dedicated communion, to denounce the sexual covenant that you've made with these spirits and, and all of their works. So declare and plead the blood of Yahshua. That is Jesus. I call him by his original Hebrew name, Yahshua. But you, you call however you're comfortable. I just feel so much power when I say Yahshua. So de 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 declare the power and the authority of the blood of Yahshua to break the stronghold of these spirits, to cast them out of your life, out of your body, out of your mind, out of your home, but also to destroy all of their works. 
uh, declare the word of Scripture over them. That you know, this body is 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 the temple of the living God of Yahweh. They cannot have your body, so you need to declare you are one one spirit with Him. Your your body are members of Christ. That's what the Scripture says. You are members of Christ, and so you need to declare all of that out loud. Denounce them. You have no right to be here. No authority over my body. I I do not invite you here. Go take all of your your babies with you. <laughs> you know, just really, really, really verbally denouncing it with that practice of communion, taking the body and the blood of Yeshua to break all of those ties. Very powerful. And then number two, um, it says, depending on your level of bondage and what you are involved in sexually, it may take some time and effort to get complete deliverance. It is likely that after step one, you will have other encounters. If you do have an encounter with a night demon, immediately abort what they have planted in you. Think of it as taking a morning after pill. As in step one, this is all about verbal declaration of Yahweh's word and denouncing their works through the power of the blood of the lamb. So you want to, if you do have an encounter, immediately abort the seed. Don't let their seeds grow in you. Don't ever forget the purpose of these spirits coming is to impregnate you. So with every encounter, you must immediately abort the seed. Immediately abort the seed. Do not let whatever they have planted in you continue to be nurtured and grow inside of you so that you end up giving birth to more evil and more sin in your life. So that is really, really important. Uh, number three, do not ever let an attack carry on without challenging the spirits. When an attack begins, say verbally, and out loud, something like, I know what you are and what you are here for. I renounce you in the power of the blood of Yeshua. My body does not belong to you. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I command you to leave me right now in Yeshua's name. I do not receive your seed into me and I will not give birth to your offspring of evil. And that's just an example of something that you can say. Now, this segment is coming to a close. You can see I'm very passionate talking about this deliverance. Uh, so I'm going to record the next session right away um, and, um, and get it posted up. But we are going to have complete victory and deliverance in this area uh, if you can apply these deliverance steps. This is Dr. Intimacy. Thanks so much for joining. Look forward to you connecting with me again on the next Insights from Dr. Intimacy. Hi, and welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast with your host, Prophetess Lenine Hanaya, a.k.a. Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex relationships and intimacy from a spirit, soul, body perspective. I am continuing with my series on Incubus and Succubus. This is the actually the 10th video in this series. It's uh, the ninth session, but the 10th video in this series and we are talking about deliverance right now. We, we, we've given a lot of great information. And now I'm actually down to the, the best part of this where I am sharing with you the revelations I received from the Holy Spirit about how to get delivered. So let's get right back into that. The last session, a session ended with me talking about step three. Do not ever let an attack carry on without challenging the spirits. Now, this is really important. Now, you know, I've mentioned several times that these encounters can be physically very pleasurable. And when an incubus attack begins, you might not necessarily want to interrupt it because you want to get to that expected end of having that incredible orgasm that you sometimes get with these spirits. No. When the attack begins, challenge it. Don't allow the attack to go unchallenged. Uh, as soon as you are aware that you're under attack, you have to, to cast it down. You have to take control over that temptation. Um, 
to experience that climatic uh, ecstasy and denounce this attack. So this is what you want to do. You want to open up your mouth and say something out loud. I'm going to go over this again because it was so powerful. Open up your mouth and you want to say something like this out loud. I know what you are and I know what you're here for and I renounce you in the power of the blood of Yahshua. My body does not belong to you. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I command you to leave me right now in Yeshua's name. I do not receive your seed into me and will not give birth to your offspring of evil. Now, as long as you don't have any obvious open doors in your life, this will usually immediately bring under subjection any assault that takes place while you are awake. Okay, so this works immediately. If you say that out loud during an attack, it will immediately subdue the attack as long as you don't have any obvious open doors. And we always have open doors because I, I, I mentioned earlier in another segment that disobedience in and of itself is an open door. There's nobody that is that, that walks in, in uh, ultimate perfection. But when I'm talking about an open door, I'm talking about obvious open doors like like uh, masturbation, pornography addictions, and things of that nature. Um, so this is going to immediately bring under subjection any attack, including those incredibly overwhelming sexual urges that happen and cause you to have a spontaneous orgasm. So that will work for anything. Now, uh, as a side note, uh, I want to say this too, always keeping that balance because I do have some people contact me and they just don't have a balanced view. They think everything that happens is a demonic attack and not everything happening in your body is a demonic attack. Uh, there are biochemical processes in the body. Some of these things are physiological. So not everything is a demonic attack. Okay. So for sexual urges that are not dem demonic, a simple mind over matter approach is effective. Just go do something else. Get yourself busy reading a book, doing some busy work, some housework, some exercise. Uh, sometimes because of hormonal changes in the body or some external stimuli, you become sexually aroused at a time where there's no legal release for that. If your husband or wife is not around for you to uh, get sexual release, then there's no legal recourse for relieving yourself of those sexual urges that may happen spontaneously, well not spontaneously, but they may happen because you are stimulated either from a thought or a picture or a, a hormone surge. And, and that's normal that that happens sometimes. So the mind over matter approach is, is going to work. If you're rebuking a demon that's not there, you're not gonna get any relief. So if your sexual urge is not is not de demonically derived then rebuking the demon won't help you um, you need to go do something go do some exercise go do some housework uh, get on the phone go into worship okay so I just want to throw that out there to make sure that we have a really balanced view because not everything is demonic and sometimes thinking that it is a demonic tack is all that is all the open door that the enemy needs to make it a demonic attack. Just the fact that you think it is, the fact that you believe it is, opens the door for it to actually become one. Okay, so that's really important. I want to make sure uh, I throw that out there. Now, listen, don't kid yourself, okay? Don't expect this to work if you are still willfully engaging in a sinful lifestyle. These steps are going to work for you if you're doing all that you can to, to make your lifestyle conducive to them working. But if you are listening to sex-filled secular music, if you're still watching pornography, if you're hanging out with people that have a lot of sexual sin in their lives, if, if you're still hanging out with your, uh, your former sex partners and all they talk about is the sex that you used to have, uh, you know, making sexual jokes with you. Please, let's be realistic. Don't don't deceive yourself. You can't expect this deliverance to work for you when you are still joyfully and fondly immersed in the lifestyle that opened the door to bring these spirits into your life to begin with. So you're going to have to make some lifestyle changes if you really expect to be delivered, there have got to be some lifestyle changes 
that take place. Okay. Now, number four, for those attacks that occur while you are sleeping, apply the blood of Yahshua to your mind and renounce these spirits before you lay down. Okay, so if you're experiencing these attacks while you're asleep, what you want to do is actually cover yourself before you go to sleep. Um, purpose in your subconscious mind. So this is, this is uh, a thought, an idea, or a command, if you will. You actually want to give a command to your subconscious mind. I have experienced this. It works. I'm telling you, it works. You want to give a command to your subconscious mind to wake up if you start to have a sex dream or nightmare. So you're actually going to give a command to your subconscious mind, almost like setting an alarm clock um, to say, hey, if I start having a sex dream or a nightmare, I need you to wake me up. Uh, don't don't allow it to continue unchallenged. Wake me up. Because if you wake up, that's the best option. You can now challenge that attack. You can verbally renounce those spirits like I like I mentioned in step three. Um, and so uh, when you wake up, immediately abort anything that they may have planted in you. This is so important. You cannot let their seeds grow in you. Kill the seed by pleading the blood of Yeshua against it. Okay, very important. Again, going back to killing that seed. Because even if you stop the attack, even if you uh, cause the demon that was afflicting you to flee, if they have impregnated you, their seed is growing inside of you. It is being nurtured. You will give birth to it. These attacks will continue. It will be a vicious cycle. You must kill the seed. And I mentioned uh, in the last segment, I talked in step one about taking communion to break that, that covenant that has taken place with those spirits, that sexual covenant that took place with your flesh. Take communion to break that covenant. Anytime you have an encounter, don't do that just once. Every single time you have an encounter, take that communion. You really need to check out that article on my blog and the Understanding Intimacy series. It's drintimacy.wordpress.com. And if you look at the featured uh, articles page, you'll see a link for the Understanding Intimacy series. And I talk about the practice of communion. And uh, check that out so you'll know how to effectively use communion to break these sexual ties that are made with these spirits when they come. Because you need to do that. You need to engage in that communion practice every single time you have an encounter until they stop. Okay. Now, this is really important. And I think a lot of people fail right here. This might be maybe the number one factor outside of obvious sin and carnality in your life. This may be the number one pitfall that causes people to stay in this cycle of attacks. Okay. Do not repeat what you have dreamed about to anyone. So when you are visited by an incubus spirit, and they cause you to have a sex dream or nightmare. Do not repeat the dream to anybody. Uh, the only exception would be if you briefly, with very limited detail, mention it in a counseling or a prayer type situation, um, just for prayer or advisement or interpretation. But outside of that, and even in that, you want to be very careful. You want to avoid mentioning it if you can. And even if you do, limited, limited details. And let me tell you why. This is so important. The demons want you to speak out the images from your sex dream because the power of life is in your tongue. They want you to talk about it. The power of life is in your tongue. Speaking it out gives birth to it. The words you say after an encounter can either give life to their seed or bring death to their seed. And that is why usually your first unction is to tell someone about it. Remember, I keep talking to you about immediately aborting the seed. And how do you abort the seed? Well, by verbally denouncing it, by verbally 
pleading the blood of Yeshua against that seed, verbally saying, I do not receive this seed into me, verbally casting it out, verbally declaring the words of scripture, and with that practice of communion. But more so that verbal denouncement is what aborts the seed. And so if you uh, actually begin to repeat what you saw in the dream, if you repeat the nightmare, if you repeat the sexual experience, now instead of using your mouth to verbally denounce and abort that seed, you're actually nurturing it. You're giving life to it. You're helping it to grow so that it's not only conceived, but is also given birth to. Okay? So don't talk to anyone about it. And I know it's really tempting, especially... If the dreams are really disturbing, you really want to tell somebody, you want someone to pray with you, you're afraid, but no. And not only that, but it's infectious. It's like a virus that you're spreading. When you tell somebody else about it, you're now introducing an open door to the person that you tell about it so that they can also be afflicted with these spirits and with these attacks. So don't ever talk about it. Don't ever mention it. Don't ever put it in writing. OK, don't even rehearse the dream in your mind. Don't rehearse it in your mind. Cast down the very thought of it from your conscious and subconscious mind. Don't speak about it. Don't rehearse it in your mind. The sex dream, the nightmare, cast it out. Cast down. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. Bringing every thought subject to the obedience of Christ. Get rid of that thought. Think on these things, those things that are lovely and pure and noble. Meditate on his word. In his word, Dr. E, meditate day and night. Get the Bible out and start reading it out loud to get that thought out of your mind until it is completely gone. So important. Don't repeat it. Don't rehearse it. Don't meditate on it. Don't contemplate it. Don't try to interpret it. Don't try to figure out what it means. They want to impregnate you. That's what it means. It means that lust demons are coming to destroy your life. Get rid of it. Cast it down. This is probably one of the most important things that I can say to you because this is the major pitfall that causes people to continue to be victimized by these spirits. So we're, again, talking about incubus and succubus, how you get delivered. That was uh, step four. Uh, this session is coming to an end, but I'm really excited to continue with this in the next session. So please join back in with me. This is Dr. Intimacy. You've been watching the insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast. And I thank you so much for joining me. Hope this is helping you. Please remember to share it on your social media website so that other people can be blessed.